Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we've been working on a renovation on our 1961 Aljo, which is our photo booth camper for our business, Lamp House Photo. Uh, so last week we built this wall, and this week I want to match this wall to the other wall and make sure that they are the exact same shape and size and everything. Problem is, we of course have to build the second wall first. So, you know, if only you could just like snap your fingers and it'd be done. That worked pretty well. All sleight of hand aside, if you're interested in how I built the second wall, uh, just, you know, watch the last video, but like in a mirror or something. That's basically it. It's identical, same process. Uh, I did make a slight change. I went ahead and added a fourth layer to the outside radius. Uh, which meant that I had to change the lengths on the interior studs so that the overall size of the wall wasn't any larger. It's not really that hard to do when you're doing everything in SketchUp. I'm a little bit happier with how this one turned out, which definitely means we're going to need to match the other wall to it. I can already tell there's a little difference here and there. So we're going to fix that. And it's really pretty easy to fix, uh, but you know, it is something you do want to fix. You don't want to have the two walls be wildly different in size or shape because that's going to have a major effect on when you put those ceiling joists in. You don't want them to be you know, down here and up here and so on and so forth. So, so the simplest way to correct any error that may be there on these is to line them up very carefully, screw the two walls together, lay them down flat and see where they're different. And where they're different, you either take a belt sander and remove wood where you need to. And if you need to at other places, you add more wood and then you smooth it out with that belt sander. There's nothing to it. One of the most asked questions I've received on this channel is how do you make those curves? And that's it. You glue it together, you sand it down, you make it smooth. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. So one thing that I think is a good idea to do at this time is to go ahead and any of this little glue squeeze out that's uh, making a bunch of little bumps on this part, go ahead and take that off. And I usually just take a block plane and just go through real quick and knock them down. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but I think you'll get uh, a better fit uh, when you go to put the panel on this surface if you've taken those off. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I've found this to be about as quick as any of them. That's all it takes. Okay, so once you get both walls laying on top of one another, what I usually do is I come in and I just uh, drive some screws through them to make sure they stay perfectly lined up. When it comes to lining them up, usually what I do, I, I find a point that's the same on either side and I start there. In this case, I've got the wheel wells in the exact same position on both sides. So once I line them up, I just make sure that my trailing end and my leading end uh, are perfectly lined up on both of those. And then it's just a matter of deciding which is the more correct curve you want to go with. So I think you can probably tell right here that there's, you know, almost a half inch difference between this and that. Why did that happen when my SketchUp was so exact? Well, because the thing that isn't exact is making this curve. You might bend it a little differently one time, and then when you go to the next one, you bend it a little differently. Uh, and this is where you would maybe want to refer to your skin to see which is more correct, or in this case, which I still am pretty certain I'm gonna go with new skin on this. Uh, it's just which one I prefer. And I actually prefer this one here. If you're trying to reuse your skin, it's gonna be very important to maybe get your skin and put on this and uh, make sure it's lining up just so. And if your wall is bigger than your skin, then you need to take some of that wall away with your belt sander. If your skin is bigger than the wall, then you can kind of decide whether you want to add 
to the wall to make it match the skin or if you want to just trim away some of that skin to match your new wall and that's kind of your call there probably matching your wall to the skin is always the best policy but you do you One thing, if you're worried about those staples in there, um, don't be, because your belt sander will cut through those without much trouble. Uh, but it's always a good idea to have a few extra belts on hand, because occasionally you'll just burn through one and it'll break and flap and you have to change it. The front of it's pretty well matched up now, so I just need to finish up the back. So there, there is at least another way I can think of to match the walls, but it does require you to do the last layer of that radius a little differently, uh, or maybe the last layers. So if you used a really long flush trim bit in a router, you could much quicker and probably ultimately more accurately match those two walls, but you're not going to want any staples in that last layer because that will just chip up your bit and chew it all to pieces so i wouldn't recommend doing that because those bits are kind of expensive i'm going to take these two apart put them in the garage in case it rains tonight and then we'll get back at this tomorrow so having test fitted the windows in so i know that they're not going to need some adjustment uh, i'm ready to go ahead and put the plywood down on this so I've brought it back over here and I've laid it on my flattest part of my driveway because you really don't want to be uh, putting this paneling on with any kind of bow or anything on that wall because you will be essentially baking that stress into that panel when you fix it to the wall. And you want it to be nice and flat because that's uh, ideally, I think that's how it's supposed to be on your camper. One thing on these walls that I haven't done yet and... I probably should have done this when they were still attached together, but I haven't exactly finished the uh, wheel arch. It's kind of roughed in, so I'll be doing that at a future point. Uh, but it won't really change things uh, much as far as what I'm doing right here. So what we're going to be covering these walls with is Sanda plywood. And I, I might be saying that wrong, but I know a lot of people think that that's sanded plywood that they just drop the d off of the end and yes it is sanded but sanda sandy uh plywood is actually a uh, i believe southeast asian uh hardwood species that is cheaper to make plywood out of than say like burnt oak or other types of plywood so it's it's not terrible stuff but it is cheap stuff it smells kind of like hay uh, I don't really like working with it, but, you know, those of you hoping for, you know, an amber shellac interior in this uh, photo booth camper, sorry, it's just going to be painted white. And there's a good reason for painting it white, because uh, in a photo booth, if you paint this any color other than white, if you stain it, if you uh, amber shellac it, do like a really pretty birch interior, uh, the color from that surface will reflect around in there and will affect the color balance of your photos. So it's white. It's just white, white, and that's what it is. So there you have it. <laughs> it's 
cheap stuff. Yeah, I mean, I should say it is cheap stuff. It's like $10 less per sheet than birch. You know, birch can vary quite a bit these days. Okay, so when it comes to gluing this together, uh, you're gonna want to mark where your studs are before you put your glue down so that you can come back and tack it with, uh, you can use a staple gun, but I always just use a little brad nailer for this. That way there's less of a hole to have to fill or cover up with trim or something like that. You know, it's the glue that's actually holding it. The, the nail is just the clamp. I'm going to kind of rudimentarily mark where those studs are on the panel so that I can run a row of brads down that line and hit the studs, hopefully. And then of course, when you're done, you come back with your trim router and you take off that radius and then if you want you can tack down that outer edge. So it occurs to me I didn't really explain what a flush trim router bit is so if you're not familiar it's this. It's a sort of straight cutting bit that has a little bearing on the end that you need to keep clean. That bearing rides against what you're cutting and then that cuts whatever is above it to the same size as the bearing. So pretty simple, works great for doing this. Really useful tool, uh, makes a router such a good thing to have around the shop. Okay, this piece needs to be trimmed just a little bit so that it can fit between the other two panels. So I'm just going to hit it with my jigsaw. That one fits in there now. So just mark it, glue it, nail it. It is hot. It is humid. I'm tired. There are a lot of mosquitoes. I don't like it. There you have it, one wall is all put together and paneled and you know matched to the other wall. Once you're at this point, it's pretty much just a snap to finish the next one. So anyway, I'm gonna get these put away, keep them out of the rain, probably go get some wood to start on uh, building the deck on the trailer frame. So I'll need to get some 10 foot two by fours for that and some plywood and some other stuff. Lots of stuff to come. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Let's just try this one more time. If you could only snap, it'd be done.